very, very quickly. Remember last class I showed you that checklist on the website? That is very helpful. If you don't want to use something that detailed, here is something else that you can take a look at to give you an idea of the things you want to remember to do. So before the test, make sure you greet your participant. I know it's obvious. can't tell you how many times people say something like, oh, yeah, go sit down. I'll be with you in a minute. So friendly, right? Yes, you want to, them to feel welcomed. Make sure they read and sign the consent form. Have them fill out your entrance questionnaire before you have them do the tasks so we can keep things consistent. Now, there are times where out in industry they will act, actually have people fill in their demographic information afterwards. That's fine also. You just want to make sure that you are consistent from your first participant to your last participant. Do it in the same order. Read the procedure script and give the participant the task list. Don't forget, I know I've mentioned this a couple times, you don't give them the one that has your notes or the place to write your notes or your click stream. You give them one that doesn't have that, that only has the verbiage of each task. I know, it's another one of these things that sounds obvious. Yes, there are groups who have done that in the past. During the test, make sure you use your log, use your checklist. Check off what they accomplish and what they don't accomplish. All right, take your notes. In taking your notes, one thing that may happen is you may start to see consistent problems across participants. In that case, you may just want to create another checklist really quick. See how many of your participants have the same types of problems. Make sure you note any of the problems. If you happen to have an idea or hypothesis about why they may be having a problem, also write that down really quickly. That can help you with, with ideas for your final write-up. Make sure you are sensitive to frustration. Be ready for unplanned situations. Things never go as smoothly as you expect them. Right? Something is going to happen. If you're, let's see, what happened to some of my, my, my other groups? I had a group. They were running their participants here in the library in one of the quiet areas. What do you think happened in the middle of one of their participants? Fire alarm went off. <laughs> they were not able to keep the person at their desk. No, they actually had to get up in the middle and leave. Right? So. They wouldn't be able to use that participant, right? Because it wasn't consistent, therefore, and they already know part of it. Well, what they, end, what they ended up doing, since they were running out of time, I was nice enough to accept it. Normally you would say, okay, I have to throw out that participant because it's not the same. What they ended up doing was they actually used that. There were was, there was some differences between this participant and the other participants, and they used that to explain the differences. So in the middle of this, you know, this participant's test, you know, they had this difference, but in the middle of the test there was a file on, we had to leave, and we come back, they may have affected the results in such and such way. So that's another option. But things like that can happen. Or they get a phone call in the middle of their, you know, in the middle of their testing. Actually, in particular, if your participants for this class, if your participant gets a phone call and they answer the phone, try to ask them to turn their phone off. But instead of rerunning the participant, since we do have um, a limited schedule, just make sure you consider that in your write-up. All right, look and listen for the unexpected. Avoid intervening unless necessary. And try using questions to redirect when they ask something as opposed to taking over and telling them how to do things. <clears throat> At the end, you want to debrief your participant. What you're doing is you are giving them their, their uh, questionnaire at the end of your session. You may, if you want, include a verbal interview where you ask them. You may want to ask some additional clarifying questions about something that occurred while they were performing the tasks. That's OK also. You can see it as an extension of your tasks. Make sure you thank your participant in a very nice way. We tend to forget that. 
You want to make sure that in between your participants, you have time to collect, summarize, and organize your test data. You don't want a big pile of papers in a mess after you have just run five participants, and then you don't know which notes go with, with which participant. And remember, you do have to reset the room and the environment for your next participant. You need to start at the same place. You need to give yourself time for that. Usually about 15 minutes. That gives you a little bit of time for if they happen to be late, and you can reset things. Now one last thing before we go on to your forum. What we're doing in this class, because we're only running five participants, actually was considered more of um, the size of a pilot study. And so when you go on to industry, a lot of times what will happen is you'll design a study, you'll do a pilot study to see how it goes, which is basically a practice test. Right? You're going to use the, same, the actual materials, the actual equipment, the actual facilities. Right? You're going to make sure that you are running it in the same way that you would run your participants. The focus of a pilot test, however, typically is to actually test out your materials and your environment to see if you have to refine them or make any changes. And after that is when you would conduct your final tests. We are not doing that. I'm assuming that you guys are so brilliant that, you are test, that your test materials are already perfect. Don't assume that when you go to a job, though. Any questions about running your participants? If your participant asks you how to complete a task, what do you do? Nothing. You do not yet. Yeah, you do not complete the task for them. You need to use a neutral prompt and say something like, "What is the difficulty that you're you know you are having? What did you expect?" You can tell them, "Well, I can't tell you how to do it because you're helping us test." The product, those sorts of things. Well, yes. Does the participant have to be a, a college student? No. As long as they meet whatever requirements there are for your particular type of user, it could be a sibling. You know, for all I know, it doesn't have to be a college, another college student. In fact, some uh, some groups like to go and find a range of ages. The only thing is, you do want them to be at least 18 years of age. So once you start dealing with, with essentially minors, usually you have to get the parents to sign a consent form too, and there's a whole other group of rules. So just make sure they're 18 or older. OK, any other questions? So you guys are ready to schedule and run your participants? <laughs> At least one group is, yes. All right. Uh, how do we know when the video is too long? Like, what's... You mean your presentation video or your... Uh, our participant. Like, if they're taking too long, how do we know when it's... Putting your, well, as you're putting your, ta your task together and you're doing, putting together your click stream, estimate how long you think it will take them, and I would at least double it. And if it's more than that, that's too long. But also try to be... Um, you know, do try to be reasonable in how long you think it'll take them. Because as you're, you, as you're doing your task, you're like, OK, you click here, here, click here, click here, click here. Except you have to remember, you have to give users time to look at the screen, figure out where to click, and where to go next. All right, any other questions? That actually was a great question. Yes? Um, so we have to do five people at least, right? You have to run at least five people. And show how many people at least. Well, you have to record at least one. I actually recommend that you record more than one so that when you do your final presentation, you actually have more clips that you can pull from it to include in your presentation. Well, the one, the one that you required, we do have, you do have to show the, you do need to record the whole test. Oh, no, for your presentation, you do not have to show the whole thing. You're going to be giving me a link to the one where you record the whole test. But for putting it into your presentation, what I really recommend is you just take clips. 